Horizontal alignment is viewed from above, which is known as the plan view. In this image, we are connecting two tangents with a simple curve. The point where the curve leaves the tangent is known as the point of curvature, and where it returns to the tangent is the point of tangency. The two tangents connect at the point of intersection, and the curve is described both by its length and by the radius. Vertical alignment is viewed from the side, which is known as the profile view. The point of vertical intersection is where the two grades come together. The assumed shape of a vertical curve is a symmetric parabolic curve. And the point where the curve leaves the entrance grade is the point of vertical curvature. And where it returns to the grade, known as the exit grade, is the point of vertical tangency. Looking at an example of horizontal and vertical curve, we can see this image of a roadway where we have three points, a star with an elevation of 409 feet, a circle with an elevation of 390 feet, and a triangle in the foreground with an elevation of 414 feet. So looking at the various perspectives, starting with the horizontal alignment perspective, we see that there's a curve near the middle of this section and tangents on each side of this. We can also look at this from the vertical perspective. We do see that there's a sag vertical curve, basically a dip in the middle of this section where the near where the circle is placed. Here's another example showing horizontal alignment and vertical alignment. From the horizontal perspective, it's very simple. It's a, it's a tangent section along this, these three points. But in the vertical perspective, there's again, similar to the first example, a sag vertical curve. Here's another example showing a lot of complexity now in the horizontal alignment perspective, connecting those three points, where in the vertical alignment perspective, it's essentially a continuous downgrade. There are some changes in longitudinal grade, but primarily a consistent downgrade. For a basic horizontal curve, we can use the arc definition. This is using a 100 foot arc length to define the relationship between the degree of curvature and the radius. The degree of curve is equal to 18,000 over pi times the radius. And there is another way to define the radius of a curve related to the degree of curvature. And this is typically used in railroad applications and also in, in some military applications as well, where you use a 100 foot cord length. So now that 100 foot length is now a straight line instead of an arc. So slight difference there in highway alignment design, we are going to use that arc definition. So chord definition is certainly less common, uh, but it is another way to define the degree of curve and that relationship between the degree of curve and the radius. Looking at the points on a simple horizontal curve, we'll start with the tangent. So we have a back tangent and the forward tangent. So that goes along with your preliminary traverse. So when you're laying out a alignment of a road, you're going to start with straight lines, and then you need to come back and connect those tangents with smooth curves. The point where those tangents connect is the point of intersection, and the angle between the back tangent and the forward tangent is the intersecting angle I, which is also equal to delta. The point where our curve leaves the tangent, leaves the back tangent, is the PC, the point of curvature, and where it returns to the tangent at the forward tangent is the PT, point of tangency. The distance between those two points in a straight line is the long chord, which is known as C. And then the, the length along the roadway, along the arc, is L. The radius defines the sharpness or flatness of the curve, R. We have the tangent length T, and that's the distance between the PC and the PI, and also the PI to the PT. But what we'll see in terms of stationing 
we only are focused on that portion on the back tangent, the tangent length t, from the pi to the pc. Typically in a problem, we'll be given the station of the pi, and then we can use that tangent length t to find the station of the pc. We also have the terms e and m. m is the middle ordinate, so that's the distance from the midpoint of the curve to the midpoint of the long chord, and the external distance e is a similar concept. It's where the pi connects to the midpoint of the curve, and so those are our most common terms that we will use associated with horizontal curves, simple horizontal curves. So now some equations. Our equation for the radius and its relationship to the degree of curvature d. Again, this describes the sharpness or the flatness of the curve. So the radius equals 5,729.6 divided by d. Um, in more complete terms, that equation is 18,000 over pi times the degree of curve d. The tangent defines the distance along the tangents from the pi to the pc or the pi to the pt, as I mentioned previously. But again, for stationing purposes, the distance from the pi to the pc is the most important. Although again, each of those is equal to the tangent length t, where t is equal to the radius times the tangent of delta divided by two. And finally, the length of the curve defines the distance along the arc of the curve from the pc to the pt. And this is equal to 100 times delta divided by the degree of curvature, which is also equal to the radius times the delta times pi divided by 180. The long chord defines the chord length, the straight line segment from the PC to the PT, where C, the long chord, is equal to 2 times the radius times the sine of delta divided by 2. The middle ordinate defines that distance from the midpoint of the curve to the midpoint of the long chord where the middle ordinate is equal to the radius times 1 minus the cosine of delta divided by 2. The external distance E defines the distance from the pi to the midpoint of the curve. The external distance is equal to the tangent length times the tangent of delta divided by 4. And so when we're looking at stationing, we have our pi, and to find our PC, we're going to subtract the tangent length from that PI. So the PC equals PI minus T. And to find the PT, we're going to add the length of that arc to the PC station. So the PT is equal to the PC plus L. When we're using stationing in, in English units, one station equals 100 feet. And that format would be 1 plus not not 1 plus 0, 0 equals 1 station. So 1 station is 100 feet, and we'd write it with that plus sign format. And again, geometrically, the tangent distance describes the distance from the PI to the PC and also from the PI to the PT. However, for stationing purposes, the stations must go from the PI back to the PC if you start with the PI and then over to the PT using the length of the curve. So you cannot just add the tangent length to the PI to get the PT. That's not the way stationing works. We want to station along the roadway itself, not along your preliminary traverse. So let's take a look at an example. We're told that we have a three degree simple curve with a PI at station 127 plus 50 that has an intersecting angle of 13 degrees, 25 minutes. We're asked to find the radius for this curve. So it always helps to have a nice, just simple drawing illustrating our givens. We have the PI, the point of intersection is 127 plus 50, and the intersecting angle I is 13 degrees, 25 minutes. The degree of curvature, three degrees for this specific curve, directly relates to the radius through the following equation. The degree of curvature, equals 360 degrees times 100 feet divided by 2 times pi times the radius, as we're familiar with the more simplified equation, 18,000 divided by pi times the radius. So we were told it's a 3 degree curve, so 3 degrees equals 18,000 over pi times the radius. 
can solve for the radius. The radius equals 18,000 over pi times 3 degrees. Gives us an, a radius of 1,909.859 feet. And that was answer C. Now we're given the same information and asked to find the length of the tangent. So again, a nice simple drawing. So we know our radius was 1,909.859 feet. We also can recall that delta is equal to the intersecting angle I. And our equation for the tangent length T equals radius times the tangent of delta divided by 2. So our tangent length is 1,909.859 feet multiplied by the tangent of 13.4166 degrees divided by 2 gives us a tangent length of 224.64 feet. That is answer A. Again, with the same information, we're asked to find the point of curvature. So given the PI and the tangent length, we need know where you need to subtract the tangent length from the PI to get to the PC. So our equation is the PC equals PI minus T. So the PC is 127 plus 50 minus 2 plus 25. We have a 225 foot length tangent. Gives us a PC of 125 plus 25. And that is answer D. Next, we're asked to find the length of curve for the same curve. The length is equal to 100 times delta divided by the degree of curvature. So the length equals 100 times 13.4166 degrees divided by 3 degrees. Gives us a length of 447.22 feet. And that is answer C. Next, we're asked to find the PT for the same curve. So if you're starting from the PI, you're going to go back the tangent length T to get to the PC, and then we're going to add the length to get to the PT station. So our PT equals the PC plus the length. The PC equals PI minus T. So the PT equals the PI minus T plus L. So the PT is 127 plus 50 minus 2 plus 25 plus 4 plus 47. Gives us a PT station of 129 plus 72. And that is answer C. We have the same curve, and now we're asked to find the long chord. Again, the long chord is that line, straight line that connects the PC and the PT. We know the radius, 1,909.859 feet. We know delta equals the intersecting angle I. And our long chord C is equal to 2 times the radius times the sine of delta divided by 2. So we're going to plug in our known values, 2 times 1,909.859 feet times the sine of 13.4166 degrees divided by 2. So it's a long chord length of 446.2 feet, and that is answer B. We're asked to find the external distance for the curve. So again, the external distance is that distance between the PI and the midpoint of the curve. The external distance E is equal to T times the tangent of delta divided by 4. Tangent length of 225 feet times the tangent of 13.4166 degrees divided by 4 gives us an external distance of 13.19 feet, and that is answer A. Now we're being asked to find the middle ordinate length. Again, that is the distance between the midpoint of the chord and the midpoint of the curve. The radius is 1,909.859 feet. The middle ordinate length is the radius times 1 minus the cosine of delta divided by 2. 
So our middle ordinate length is 1909.859 feet times 1 minus the cosine of 13.4166 degrees divided by 2 gives us a middle ordinate length of 13.08 feet, and that is answer A.